he's like, he's like, he's sitting here. Oh, yeah, he's like, you got I was like, I'm sorry, you got this camera in the way. Yeah, I was like, hey, no, yeah, I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like,
board has to chair our ad, so go ahead and pull over it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I have a very simple bill. It may generate a little bit of discussion, um, but what that bill does is essentially require a two-thirds affirmative vote by the student body um, for an increase in undergraduate tuition. And Mr. Chairman, I, I know the bill sounds crazy, and, and I get that, but college affordability is a really, really significant issue for many of these children. Many of them aren't as, as fortunate as our children are and don't have parents that can pay the tuition readily. Some of them work two or three jobs to try to get through school, and yet these state institutions just rather cavalierly raise tuition. These children, I shouldn't call them children, they're young adults, they're not children. But these young adults don't have any say in it. They don't have any say in their own destiny at this university, and I want young people to be involved and engaged in a democratic community. That's why we send them to university anyway. I don't want to be part of an autocratic or a dictatorial society. They are supposed to be part of this democratic community to learn and thrive and then go on and have bright futures. And when we continue to make it more and more expensive for them, we're just quashing them before they even get started. And so I know it sounds crazy, but I want you to think through this a little bit. Um, maybe we can make some changes along the way in this bill. But we've got to give these young people a set in, in their you. own futures at these universities. Do you see any situation in the foreseeable future or 50, next 50 or 100 years where two-thirds of the students would both raise their own tuition? You know, Mr. Chairman, I've heard that question from a lot of folks, and I really believe, some people take young people for granted, but I really believe that if you have a valid case to raise tuition, and you put it before those young people, and make your case, and it is valid that they'll agree to it, because they understand it's what's got to be done in order for them to stay in that community. If it's not a valid case, I don't think they'll agree to Mr. Chair, Senator Peters. A uh, couple questions. How do you get them to vote? I mean, we have enough apathy in our own elections. Ooh. How do you get everyone to participate? Senator Peterson, I, I mean, we can we can draw those rules if you want, but it seems to me we should give the, uni the universities the flexibility to determine how that should be done. Okay, second question, Mr. Chair. And, and Mr. Stewart, I know our, our children both attend the same university, so I think it's fair to say our daughters have come from a pretty good position. In my case, my kids are not paying their own way to college, thank God. I got a 529 plan set up for them. So, quite candidly, they can make decisions with my money. Um, so, I don't know necessarily they might have the same interest in it as, say, I would. Um, so, how do you deal with the fact that sometimes there are going to be some students that they're not financing their own education? You know, Senator Peterson, that, that's the whole point of this. So I was one of those kids who had to work a lot, and my children do not have to, fortunately for them. But I think that's what makes it a very dynamic and democratic engagement, because these children, I keep calling them children, they're not, they're young adults. These young adults have to discuss this and work through this themselves. And I think it could be one of the most important experiences that they could actually have in university because they're making real decisions that affect their future there. Okay. All right. Um, the chairman. Yeah. Did All you, right, Senator Black. Just one quick comment. I, you know, one of the things that's always bothered me about uh, higher education in Virginia is that unlike most institutions, they're there's really no pushback. There's no sort of market force to control costs and that sort of thing. And I understand, you know, I, I can see some uh, some issues with this, but I'm going to support it because, honestly, it, it, whether it's voted up or voted down, I, I think that really uh, that higher education has gotten to be unreasonably expensive 
the the amount of student debt that we're incurring has gotten so astronomical that it actually presents somewhat of an economic threat to the nation. And, uh, and somehow we just got to send a message that something has got to be done to put some downward pressure on the uh, on the cost of the institution. Mr. Chairman. <coughs> I would like to speak in favor of Mr. Stewart's bill. In fact, I signed on as a co-patron. Um, as a mom of four teenage kids, two are in college, two that are um, getting ready to start college, and having many of their friends who wanted to go to college, they get, I have one particular friend <coughs> of my daughter's that I'm thinking of that got through three years of college and then ran out of money. It's too expensive, and we need to give the kids the opportunity, because many of them are paying for their own through student loans. We need to give them a voice. We need to let the students speak, and why not? I mean, they're the stakeholders. Well, let me just tell you all something. If you want to know who's responsible for this, it's not the colleges. Uh, if you want to know who's responsible, we all need to go look in the mirror. And let me explain why, Senator Chase. We're funding colleges now at the same level we did 12 years ago. We didn't have these problems before we quit funding. Uh, the, uh, uh, the state used to pay for almost 70% of that undergraduate cost. Now the state pays for 30%. And the reason is we're going to give tax, uh, th th we're going to cut the taxes for everybody and still think we can fund higher education at the same rate that we used to do before. Well, guess what? doesn't work. So that's what's put us in this situation. And as long, you know, you, you got your choice. You can keep giving the money back to the parents, uh, you know, or you can start, you can just say we're not going to do that anymore and we're going to start funding higher ed. But over the last decade, it's reversed. And that's the problem that we face. Uh, in the event this bill would pass and we want to hear from the, the uh, Proponents and opponents, but you know, no more than about five, six, seven minutes per side. Uh, it would have to go to finance because it definitely would affect uh, the funding of colleges. Okay, and, I, and let me just tell you all something. We had a tuition freeze that was instituted by a former governor by the name of Gilmore. After about a year or two of this tuition freeze, I started to get uh, some letters from my constituents. And what had happened was the school started cutting back on the courses and laying off professors. And when this one parent wrote me and said, my kid now has to go nine semesters, kindly tell me where the savings is, okay? And I was get, started to get a ton of those letters. Virginia Tech, UVA, William and Mary. That's what they were doing in order, you know, when we limited that tuition, and didn't give them any money. They just, that that eight semester school became nine and 10 semesters. That's what happened. So after two years of General Assembly, two or three years, we lifted the freeze. <coughs> That's our experience with doing that. Okay. Can I respond briefly? Sure. That? And Mr. Chairman, I, I don't disagree with anything you said. And, and, but what I would say is that this this idea initially started out as, as a bill to look at, at the tuition increases, but as I looked at that, it, it's much more important than that. <coughs> because this bill gives those young people the ability to really engage in their future. And, and so it goes way beyond the issue of the state giving them money or whether or not we give them enough money. How do colleges plan for the future? It makes them, it makes them a part of the process. That, that's what it does. It makes the young people who are participating in the, in the university part of the process, and that's why I think it could prove to be one of the most invaluable experiences well, they would get. If, if the universities go to the students and say, we're going to need to raise the tuition because we need to build buildings to plan for the future, and those students say, well, yeah, but that, you know, I'll be gone by then, uh, they're never going to get a, a tuition raise. I think you're selling. I think you are selling those young people short to think that they would be that short-sighted. I, I think they're a lot smarter than we think they are. They, they, they're a heck of a lot smarter than I was at that age. I can tell you that. 
They're much more focused, much more capable, and I think they are capable of having a say and influence in their own future. Uh -huh. Well, I'm not willing to gamble our university system. Mr. Chairman, before you go to that, uh, Senator Cosgrove. Thank you. Yeah. You know, this bill sounds a little crazy, but there, there's a method to this madness, and, and to be honest with you, I, I'm going to support the bill. I do have to say two things to Senator Stewart, actually one to you and one to Senator Peterson. Uh, I probably wouldn't use the term cavalierly. I'm okay. I don't think you're being one-sided towards the university. Anyway, the other thing is, you're killing me, man. I remember when she was born. <laughs> okay, let's hear from uh, the first uh, couple of the proponents of this bill. All right, let's hear from the proponents of this bill. I guess you got to have somebody speak. So, um, I'm Peter Blake. I'm the director of the State Council of Higher Education. Good to be with you. I'll speak just in this, and, and um, if this gets the vote from folks that couldn't hire a bill across the country this year. Thank you. Give them credit for that. I think, um, Senator Peterson, you mentioned the question, kind of the practical question of how do you mobilize a vote that would get 70% for anything? Is, is the question. And then, um, of course, we care very deeply with Chev about affordability, but it also is a shared responsibility. And, and I would just leave with those two comments, Mr. Chairman. Are you for the bill or against? I would um, not support this bill. Okay. And any of the people from the university? System have a like opinion or an unlike opinion, or you all, if you if you're silent, I assume you support the bill. Oh, come on, how leading is that? <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, speaking from the community college system, I support the bill. Um, I think that the we have 140,000 students enrolled right now. This would be a vote of 68,000 students. They'll be asking impossible to administer those. Okay. <laughs> Anybody here from any of the other public universities? <laughs> I guess not. All right. Um, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> yes. Tim Parker with Virginia Military Institute. In all candor, uh, the, the patron did offer BMI an exemption on this. And uh, uh, I think in, in principle, uh, we have an issue, obviously, with we feel like the, the Board of Business Authority is usurped also. George Mason, do you all support this bill or not? Mr. Chairman, Mark Smith with George Mason University. I've not had a chance to talk to the senator because he was out of his office, but we are not in favor of the bill. Bradford? Longwood. <laughs> Emily O'Brien with Longwood University. Thank Longwood. you to the patron for his time. He spent a lot of time with us the last couple days, and we do appreciate him, his willingness to continue this conversation about uh, college affordability, but we do have the same concern with everyone else. KMU, John Putney, we came in and met with the senator last week, had a nice 20 minutes, very enthralling, engaging <laughs> conversation. It was illuminating, I tell you. But for all the reasons already uh, mentioned, we stand in strong opposition to the bill. Um, Mr. Chair. Oh. Andy Morris with ODU, we show the same concern. Senator Peterson. Yeah, and I appreciate uh, my good friend, Senator Stewart. Uh, I oppose this bill, uh, and I'll tell you why. And first of all, I heard what Senator Sasslaw, there's a lot of reasons why tuition has increased. Senator Sasslaw talked about one reason, which is declining state versus support. That's only one reason. There's a lot of reasons. One reason is just more people go to college. And so, you know, state dollars have a lot more bodies to cover than they did back in my era. I mean, in my case, less than half the kids in my high school went to college. And that's totally changed now. Um, I, I don't think this is the right way to run the railroad. Uh, I do think you need to have a board of visitors that's responsible not just to the student body but also to the taxpayer. Uh, I also think that there are some students that, you know, the, the parents are the ones writing the check, and while the students may be the, the person that's there, the beneficiary, I think there's, you know, this, is, this should not just be the student's decision alone as much as they should. I believe they should be a part of it. That's gonna, I'm going to get to that in my bill, but I, I think we need to have a board of visitors that makes this determination. And uh, I think we need to hold them responsible for the decisions that they make. So, anyways, I would move to BBI. Uh, uh, hold on. Uh, Ashley? Sure. Ashley Myers, good with Virginia Commonwealth University. I'd like to thank the patron for sitting down and discussing this legislation with me. I would just like to echo the comments of um, the other institutions who have spoken and the State Council of Higher Education for Virginia, and we are uh, Okay. Chair 
Servicers to obtain a license from the State Corporation Commission in order to service loans in Virginia. It details the licensing process and details the list of prohibited actions that could result in the loss of the servicer's licensing and a penalty. Um, as you know, there are currently very few protections for student loan borrowers. They don't get to set to choose their loan servicer, they're assigned their loan servicer, and if they're unhappy, they're not allowed to change to another loan servicer, so they're really captive. Uh, we have some players uh, in this field that are frankly uh, not particularly reputable, uh, and if you were to Google this, you would see uh, how disreputable some of them are. Uh, what this is trying to do is to give the, the student loan borrower some protections uh, that the people who are servicing their loans are ethical and are passing minimum standards. And that's what the bill does. Oh, and it will allow for penalties. Senator Black. I've just got one <coughs> kind of technical question. I, I presume that the State Corporation Commission is posture to, to issue such licenses if it passes? Yes, and they are, I think they're here somewhere, and they are supportive of the bill. Well, um, 
Seconded that Senate Bill 1112 be reported. Uh, we recommend it be, huh? Right, I was going to say that we recommend it be reported and referred to finance. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, that goes to finance. Um, we'll ultimately go to finance. Well, we don't know. So, all right. So, uh, let's see. We've got a sports bill. All right, Senator Peterson, you're up. Thank you. I'll, I'll hopefully just move quick. I got to get to ag. Senate Bill 1118 is the public comment bill on tuition increases. Uh, this, of course, is a carryover from the bill we passed uh, a couple years ago uh, on the 30-day notice for any tuition increase. Uh, the text in front of you basically talks about prior to <coughs> actually enacting the tuition increase, uh, the, the uh, board of the, uh, each public institute of higher education shall permit public comment on the proposed increase at a meeting of the governing board. Um, I've talked to reps from pretty much everybody, and I think I've got peace on the valley with the following line amendment which is to take uh, after the word governing board comma as defined in section 2.2-3701 of the Code of Virginia, period. So I would move that line amendment and then once, if I can get a second. Okay. I move and seconded that uh, amendment to Senate Bill 1118 be approved. Thank you. Let me just speak to that sure. before you vote on the amendment. Basically what we're doing is just matching this language up with what's in the uh, Freedom of Information Act which is you could have three members of the board to be present, I believe. Is that correct, Mr. Blake, in order to uh, uh, meet this requirement? I think that would make it a lot less onerous on the colleges and universities, so I would move that amendment. Okay. You, you all heard that. Uh, this is the vote on the amendment. The amendments in favor of attaching that amendment to SB 1118. Uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? Right. And with that, amendment, I, I, with that <coughs> amendment, I think I've got it in the position I, I want it, and uh, hope I can get support. Thanks. Uh, you want to make sure you want to? I'll move to be. I think there's some folks that will want to speak oh, okay. to it. Okay. Um, Peter, Mr. Chairman, Peter Blake from Shev, and we've had an opportunity to work with sure. Senator Peterson, Senator Sturdivant, and others on this issue. Uh, the colleges do allow public comment. Not all of them do it in the same way. There's different ways that, that they receive information from students as well as others. Uh, this creates some standard, but it still does it in the Virginia way by allowing individual colleges to set their own policies. And support this. Okay. All right. Uh, motion time? Yeah, 
Oh, you got some money? Okay. Megan Ryan, Virginia cool. Coalition for the Open for our Open Government. Uh, we support the bill. I appreciate you bringing it again, and I hope it does not meet the same fate that it did in the, in the House. Thanks. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. A, I'm Brian Turner. I'm with the American Association of University Professors, and we support this bill. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Nick DeSilva. I'm a student at Virginia Commonwealth University and a student activist. I just wanted to really uh, quickly speak on my experiences regarding uh, this bill. Uh, in the past, I've gone to, throughout my tenure at VCU, I've gone to nearly every Board of Visitors meeting that I've been able to, and not once have I really been able to dialogue with the administrators and the partnering <coughs> board as much as I would like to. Uh, I've had to catch quick minutes in the hallway or just uh, side conversations. And I believe this bill will really help to connect the governing board to the people they serve. Um, and I would endorse it for you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> yes. I'm Peggy Friedenberg, representing AARP Virginia, and we support this bill. Okay. Thank you. Do I second? Or, no, it's been moved and seconded that Senate Bill 1118 is amended. Be reported. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. The recommendation of the committee will be reported. All right. Sports bill. All right, next is Senate Bill 1234, Senator DeStep. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Senate Bill 1234. <coughs> it's a very simple bill, and all this does is includes as part of the orientation for Board of Visitors, uh, includes a review of the student debt trends. So before they vote on increasing tuition, they'll know what the trends are sure. for other colleges. That's okay. it. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, any, any questions by the members? Okay, uh, Peter. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we do do about a day and a half long orientation for the board members. We have a long list of things that's already in there that's going to add to that. Okay. Anyone else? All right, anyone else want to speak? Is anybody here opposed to this? Move it for now. All right, Second. it's been a move and seconded that Senate Bill 1234 be, uh, that we recommend to the full committee that it be reported to the floor. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right, looks like the vote is six to nothing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee. Next, I have uh, Senate Bill 1239, and this one, it, uh, just states what the code is uh, somewhat silent on, but it talks about uh, the board members' duty to the Commonwealth and their primary role. Well, Peter, it looks like he wants to put you to work or give you more work. Yeah, I mean, this one's, I mean, I, you know, I don't have an opinion on this one. Primary, secondary, <coughs> Primary is, I, all due respect, I'm not sure it will change much, but if that's what you want to do, then go for it. Well, that's an endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call that a hard endorsement, but okay. uh, 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 Senator Howe. I'm just curious if board members have to swear in time mm -hmm. to know. Uh, just the standard of that anyone would have to take to serve on public board, but it doesn't include okay. language. Second, to recommend that we, um, this may, this may have to go to finance, I don't know. Uh, <coughs> right. You want to, you want to make a motion that be reported and uh, go to 
finance and then we can take that off if it turns out that there is no financial impact. So what I'd, what I'd rather do is you know, maintain my motion that the okay. no financial impact statement, there is no budget language necessary. If okay. the chairman feels like he needs to go Senate finance, I'll support that. All right. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of recommending that it be uh, uh, the recommendation of the full committee that it be reported, uh, say aye. 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 All right, and that passes. Show the Mississippi Committee, thank you very much. All right, wonderful day. Uh, Senator Sturman, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At uh, Senate Bill 1261. That's uh, <coughs> Chairman Fletcher. Establish policy. 
policies for such public comment, which may include reasonable time limitations. And so it's a pretty, gives them pretty broad discretion nonetheless as to how to oversee and implement the public comment period. And I think they would be perfectly capable of, of dealing with those issues that you raised, those important issues that you raised. Mr. Chairman, I, Cosgrove. I would uh, just have us reflect on how we do business in our own committees. You know, we'll, we'll provide you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes per side. There's nothing in this bill that precludes the governing body from doing that. Well, I don't know about the committees you're on, but the ones I'm on is usually five minutes a side. Well, I'm just saying. Uh, okay. I imagine they'll be more generous than we are. <coughs> okay. There may be one, someone who's who uh, wishes to speak this far, I think. Peter, uh, first of all, before we get that, Peter? Uh, I didn't know if Senator Peterson's version needed an amendment. I mean, meeting is defined in the Code of Virginia. Um, and so we'll, we'll that, straighten I mean, it all out in full yeah, committee. I think that would be what you need to do. Just take um, the time to figure that out. Yes, ma'am. Stacey Gordon, Partners for College Affordability. And while we really appreciate any effort to engage um, student and parent voices in the decision making process, it's going to really affect them and their own wallets. It went to you know, Senator Pearson's bill. We wholeheartedly support this version that requires every member, of, well, not every member, but during the uh, public comment period to actually take place during the meeting itself when the vote is taking place. Just as I'm standing before you today, before you guys make a decision on this bill, um, you, you know, they would be, the board's visitors would be able to make that same exact decision about how long they have to give. If you send them in, you know, um, how many side contacts, how many long each side gets. Um, this is an issue that I think, you know, a common component of uh, good governance period to hear from these stakeholder voices and when there's an issue about college affordability this is one of the biggest issues that affect many generations across many industries um, uh, many generations and um, and we're not the only ones that agree with this last um, early this week we actually sent out an email um, with the names of many organizations and community leaders and former electeds <coughs> that agree with us that uh, these voices deserve to be heard when the, by those the people making decisions on behalf of our largest enterprises, which are our college and universities, including AARP Virginia, Virginia PTA, the VEA, the Education Association, the Virginia Coalition for Open Government, the American Council, Council of Trustee and Alumni, the National Campus Leadership Council, and the U.S. Public Interest Research Group. So we hope you that you will consider passing this version of the bill. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Megan Ryan with the Coalition for Open Government. Um, I just wanted to address your, your question, Senator Howell, that um, local governments um, and school districts have been making these kinds of time, place, and manner restrictions on their public comment for years and years and years. And it can include things like requiring people to sign up in advance or having one person designated to speak on behalf of particular organizations and having only one organization and so on. So I think the bill does allow that flexibility to address um, even 16,000 comments, which I think would be a wonderful thing to have that kind of input. But um, I think it is, would be manageable too. Yes, sir. Hi, I am Nick DeSilva, VCU student. I just wanted to echo my previous comments and also add, hopefully, to assuage some of the concerns. Um, I just wanted to uh, anecdotally say I uh, follow the Board of Visitors meeting very closely, and I am the only student out of many that has attended the last three Board of Visitors meetings at my university. So I, I and that is over the course of time where there were very high tension discussions and um, uh, rallies concerning tuition uh, hikes. So um, I would say that that maybe, in my experience, has not been reflected that there would be an overwhelming student uh, presence at these meetings. Thank you. OK. okay. Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Sarah Marisol, and I'm a student at George Mason University. And there's only one student representative that sits on the board of visitors, and they have no voting or speaking powers during this meeting. So um, I support this bill um, just so students can have public comment when it comes to our tuition. And one of the things that, you know, as a result of us in the General Assembly cutting back dramatically on what we give the colleges, uh, they can either raise the tuition or ultimately they're going to pressure us or they're just going to start taking more and more out-of-state students because of the revenue. And uh, that 
that's, I mean, I've been through this before, as I, you were here earlier, you know, uh, or, you know when I was talking, uh, and we had a tuition freeze once before and it blew up in our face. Uh, they just started you know, laying off professors and the four year <coughs> school became four and a half and was moving rapidly towards five years. So we decided better to lift the freeze. So anyway, um, but you know, it is what it is. Yes, ma'am, you, you wanted oh. to say something. If you want to go somewhere and do something else, I can call you. Okay. Yeah. Um, Jeff, yes, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and I was, I was glad that he went first with the uh, tuition control bills because it's been, <coughs> I've, I've done it the last two or three years and I've usually, <coughs> uh, Senator Sazwa, you have um, given me that very appropriate and, um, and accurate and understandable explanation of the, the challenges of the tuition freeze and the General Assembly cutting funding to higher ed, and um, that, that's not lost on me, and I don't disagree, and uh, I recognize those points, and I think that they are very valid and important, and we continue to have some of the best two- and four-year public colleges in the entire country, and that does not come without <coughs> a cost, undoubtedly, and the General Assembly has not always um, done everything it should to support it our two and four year public colleges and universities. Don't disagree. Um, nonetheless, I think every one of us more and more year in and year out hear from constituents, both parents and students, about the ever increasing cost <coughs> of tuition. The Richmond Times Dispatch every August or September um, does a story on the average increase in tuition of either the Richmond area colleges or Virginia, or all Virginia <coughs> public colleges and universities. Um, and it's typically a relatively significant increase. Um, that's not every college and every year, um, but um, it, at least in the last <coughs> several years, has, has typically been a, a sizable increase. And so that's what this bill tries to address, but in a, uh, in a thoughtful <coughs> way and in a, a way that is tied to something connected to the economy, and I think how average Virginians are doing. And, that, and so this, this subcommittee has considered this bill before. I bring it again for your consideration this year. Um, and what it does is it says um, our public colleges and universities
students can increase tuition, uh, <coughs> but they can only increase it by twice the rate of inflation of the prior year. And inflation, as we know, is tracked by the federal government, and it tells us what the increase in the cost of goods and services is from year to year. Um, and it, it is most, <coughs> most Virginians, especially now, as the economy is improving, hope that they see at least an increase in their paychecks that covers a cost of living increase or that recognizes that inflation is rising and that their their paycheck um, will at least see that sort of an increase. And so that, that's what this bill does, is, is it connects those tuition increases to the rate of inflation, but it recognizes that colleges may need more than just an increase in the rate of inflation, so it doubles it. It says colleges can increase tuition by up to twice the rate of inflation. And I also so recognize that... Just a question. What's your, what, what is the rate of inflation? Uh, let's see. where a college needs to increase by more than twice the rate of inflation, this bill allows the colleges to do that. They would just have to come to the General Assembly for permission to do that. So if there's a year where there needs to be some large capital project or there's some, <coughs> some major investment that they need to make, um, this would allow them to do that, but at least it provides a little bit of some additional oversight um, over the process. And I will, I'll double check uh, Senator Cosgrove, that uh, rate of inflation for last year, and confirm it with, with you before the day is out. But um, so the construction uh, CPI rises considerably faster than general goods and services that's used by the government. And uh, I know a few years ago we had a deal with that, and uh, we put in the construction CPI because it is so much higher. I mean, just just give you an example. Uh, we met with the National Association of Home Builders uh, our <coughs> about seven or eight months ago. And it was on a tariff war going on. They were telling, uh, they told us, a group of us, mm -hmm. that uh, a year ago the lumber that cost 60000 to build a particular house had now jumped to 110000 And, you know, that's, you know, I mean, you've got these the uncertainty of this damn trade war going on. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's a problem. That's the problem that I have with these bills, is that the colleges really know mm -hmm. what they need to charge. They're not looking, you know, to price everybody out of business. The application, the UVA told me they had 41,000 applications this year. 41,000. So, I mean, you know, the demand is there. So anyway, um, all right, the bill's before us. Um, I moved to the second. All right, there's been a motion and a second to recommend uh, reporting the bill by the full committee. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is one. There is no financial impact statement on this, but I'm asking you to make it. Probably go, needs to go to finance. I just make a motion to do that. Well, well, just, yeah. well, you want to go ahead and just who made the motion? Is that you, Amanda? Yeah, okay. You want to recommend that if it passes, it goes to finance. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, your bill may not make it out of the committee. Yeah. Period. Sure. Okay. Huh? <laughs> no, no. I was. I mean, I. I I'm happy to take it up with the committee and um, yeah. address it. All right, what's your motion? I'm going to make a motion that we pass. Okay. All right. Um, uh, all those uh, in favor would be? Senator Black and I. Senator Black and Cosgrove. Uh, I vote no, and I'm voting uh, 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 Chad Peterson's no, and Senator Hall votes no, so there's no recommendation. Okay.
let's see. 
colon. Anyone, is there anyone here that's opposed to the work of Senator McClellan? All right. All right. It's removed and seconded that we recommend reporting to the full committee. Um, yeah. All those in favor of reporting 11, uh, excuse me, 1461 as amended. Uh, it's six to nothing. Okay. Wagner, you're up. Oh, you can find it on the Progress Virginia site. I ask that we roll uh, 1616 into 1546. All right, all those in favor of rolling uh, Senator Wagner's 1616. 1616 into Senator Sturman's bill, uh, which, which is.
1660 is a redo of my 115 bill, which made a subcommittee 806, which is basically a price fix and freeze uh, for in-state college tuition uh, for our uh, for our colleges starting in 21 um, 21 22 academic year schools in Virginia will prospectively fix the cost of in-state tuition uh, for that student that enters that will be uh, for those four years. So basically, the families and the students will know exactly how much college tuition is going to be for those four years and not have to endure any of these unforeseen or, or substantive and significant increases in college tuition. So when they start in the freshman year, at X amount of dollars, when they finish it, the four year, and this is based on four year, it's going to be X amount of dollars. And the, the delta that they will not change, and so they'll know what that is. Um, I will note that my friend, His Excellency the Governor, has, uh, has put forth in his budget uh, is a fan of, of fixed college tuition rates. So, uh, you know, and I know every college and university behind me loves this bill, so <laughs> they don't need to talk. You can just move me right out of here. Unanimously, <laughs> we can be done, right? Right? No? No? Okay. No. <coughs> so there you go. That's the bill. And I was faster. I was faster than everybody else. I love you, but I'm interested in the school is running. I love you, too. Yeah. All right. I'm glad that we could confess that right yeah. here in a public <laughs> setting. This is great. Not doing anything wrong with that. Not, not a thing wrong with that. All right. Uh, any questions of Senator Stanley? Okay. All right. <coughs> a couple of thoughts, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Peter, Peter, have. Peter um, Blake, what are you doing here? <laughs> Blake Michelle, be really quick. Uh, uh, Senator Stanley mentioned that in the governor's introduced budget, he has some language about uh, institution uh, plans around predictability. And so there is some discussion there. There's also a, um, a piece of legislation, I think, some of the government's carrying it that includes something about performance agreements, and this could be part of that conversation as well. So it's a lively conversation. There are, I think, four institutions right now, and these folks can correct me. William & Mary, of course, did it first. <coughs> in their William & Mary Promise. Um, UVA has an option. It's not required for everyone. It's an option in UVA. Christopher Newport just moved to this. Uh, back last fall, they announced a plan like this, and James Madison just had one. Do they hold it for years. four years, <coughs> and then they say it'll be $2 this year, $4, you know, $3, $4, $5, whatever. That's correct. It's a, it's a so four-year plan. So it's, it's not the same tuition rate as in the senior year that it might be in the freshman year, but they the, know what the tuition The four pay. programs treat it a little bit differently. Some of them freeze it at the one level, others build in an increase. It's anticipated right. and predictable, that sort of thing. So they're different. What is your bill envision? Well, my bill envisions, of course, that th these schools could raise tuition. But let's say uh, John Brown starts in 2021 and the tuition is 10000 But for four years, it's 10000 Let's say Sally Brown starts the year after. Yeah, the school could understand. raise that rate. But what you don't envision is where they would say to the $10,000 guy next year is 10500 for Correct. his third year. It's eleven thousand. It, it is a prospective fix of <coughs> okay. um, I don't know if it addresses well, that. Sure, now. Senator Cosgrove. Thank you. Yeah, I like the idea of the fixed uh, rate tuition. But historically, and Senator Sapphire, you probably know this better than anybody else. When William and Mary decided to go to that fixed four year rate, did they drastically raise tuition before that happened? That, uh, I, I don't know. But and that's the thing, William and Mary, I just wonder. So the one Mary promise, uh, Senator, you know, you are locking in that tuition for each of the four years. So now when you come in and you know the tuition increases X percentage, that is a process. No, my, my question was prior to you instituting that four year agreement, was there <coughs> was there a large tuition increase the year before? So there, that basically there hey, we know we're gonna get stuck with this for four years, boom, we're yeah, yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's the same tuition for four years? Or did you say first year it's a dollar and a quarter, second year dollar thirty five? Is it? So or is it the same tuition for each of the four years? Of four years. Not okay. each of the four years. All right, y'all have uh, any of the other universities care to comment, or did uh, did Mr. Blake speak for all of you? Mr. Chairman, may I add just one other thing? Sure. The four institutions that have something in place right now have something in common. Have a lot of full time students, they have a lot of students who finish in four years. Who are the four schools? UVA has an option, Ring and Mary, Christopher Newport, and James Madison. Okay. Um, this might not fit as well at a place where you have students coming, 
part time, dropping out, coming back, you know, at Old Dominion University or Norfolk State or George Mason. So, okay. I mean, it, not every institution is in the same place. So well, in the event that. that this would pass, it would have to go through finance since you're mandating it. But um, I, I can't support this bill. I, I thought you said you loved it. <laughs> Not that much. <laughs> now, Mr. Chairman, I'll just add that this does have an opt out where uh, there are schools that um, enroll 80% or more of Virginia students uh, would not be bound to answer. Uh, motions? I'm going to move to the All right. Um, all those in favor of recommending the bill be reported. Uh, ultimately, on the floor, say aye. Uh, you too. Aye. 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 And those who are opposed? No. Uh, no. So it's 3 3. I forgive you, Janet. I don't forgive you. Uh, that's it. I think that's it.